Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Book as in Books. I have a book haul for you today. It was not meant to be a book haul today. <laughs> um, this morning I decided to go to the Library of Ottawa's book sale. Uh, they have one per month and I, I've learned that a few months ago and I, I know they have one sale a month, but I've never went before because it's a bit far. It's a 20 minute drive from here. Uh, I'm right in the middle of this downtown Ottawa and they decide to have it in a suburb uh, but anyway I suppose it's more convenient for them but so I went for the first time and I thought well I'll buy one or two books because maybe you know I'm an, I'm in a, some sort of not a buying ban but I'm on a read your own books challenge that if I buy a book I have to read it before I read the next one so that means that the book hauls should be limited to like two books perhaps um, and I just um, j j just a bit when off the rail um, <laughs> the books were cheap uh, the books were one dollar or two dollars um, and yeah so that was at the book sale of uh, the discarded books of the library that the, the monthly book sale which was in one location and then just one block away they have the permanent store of uh, the, the library. Uh, they, they buy secondhand books. I don't think there are library discards in that secondhand store. Um, maybe there are. I, I haven't noticed. So I went to both places. So the books come from both places. The monthly mammoth sale, that's how they call it, um, and the permanent bookstore. Um, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen books. Fifteen. Uh, will I read all of that before I buy another one? I don't think so. I think I went off the wagon. Perhaps I could say I'm not allowed to go to another library sale because before I've read all of these. That would be absolutely fair. I think that's a fair. Okay, so so this haul doesn't count towards my 100 read your own books challenge where I read I buy one book, I read one book, but they will count towards another challenge. Don't go to a library sale until you've read all of these or discarded all of these because some of them, perhaps I will not want to read them. Uh, well, no, I don't want to read them. Anyway, you'll see, you'll see. So let's start with the most expensive book because I've said I've bought 15 books. All of that under $20, $19 to be exact, Canadian dollars. So it was really cheap. I could not resist. So let's start with the most expensive book that I bought today at three dollars. Oh, the letters of Vincent van Gogh to his brother Theo and vice versa, the correspondence between the two brothers. Uh, or maybe not, maybe it's just the letters of Vincent. Well, I hope we have the answers too. Anyway, um, so this is a French translation because obviously the brothers wrote to one another in English, uh, in English and Dutch. Come on, wake up, lady. In Dutch. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's a collection of letters. So that will be wonderful for People April, the new readathon, upcoming readathon in April, where you are invited to read nonfiction about people. Um, so biographies, autobiographies, correspondence, diaries, and things like that. So that, that that's a candidate. The next expensive book that I bought, three dollars again, is this. Uh, it's a uh, Jeeves and Worcester omnibus. Um, I don't know which volume it is. If it's volume one or two or three, I don't know. There's no number. So the three books in this book are The Mating Season, which I haven't read, The Coat of the Woosters, which I haven't read, and Right Ho Jeeves, which I have read and I own a copy of. But still, $3 for three books, or perhaps $3 for two books that I haven't read. See, it's a super good deal. I could not leave leave it aside. And as you can see, it's in very good condition. It's a bit yellow, but who cares? My own books are going to yellow if I don't read them. So, yeah. The next batch of books, $2. Yeah, $2. Another one for People April. Uh, Frida Kahlo by Rauda Jamis. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, it says that the author is Latin American, so perhaps it's Rauda Jamis. Perhaps it's closer. So it's a biography of Frida Kahlo. So again, another good candidate for People April. The next one, it's an essay. It's not translated in English as far as I know. Um, if we translate the title, it would be Panic at the University. And it's about um, <laughs> it's about one of Booktube's favorite subjects, censorship. The words you're allowed to use and not allowed to use, uh, cancel culture and all of that. Um, uh, there have been a couple of incidents in Canada, uh, one in uh, Montreal, University of Quebec in Montreal, and another one in Ottawa, uh, where the, it was a teacher using the N-word. 
one case it was the teacher, in another case it was in books that uh, the students had to read in literature, there was the N-word and one of the students complained. Um, so anyway, uh, th there have been a few incidences like, incidents like that, and the author, I don't know exactly who he is, uh, he's a teacher of political science at university, so he wrote an essay on the subject. And, yeah, I think that could be very interesting. Another candidate for People April, I think I, meant, I did mention it in my pile of possibilities. This is Havana Mark Kurlansky, A Subtropical Delirium. Uh, so this is a travel memoir uh, of uh, Cuba, of Havana. Uh, it's, it's rather short. Oh, I just opened it at random. Oh, it's the last page. <laughs> that was a cute little drawing. Oh, no, there are no other drawings. Okay, it's the old. Oh, no, there are other drawings. Oh, cool. See, I had not even noticed. So this is a library discard, but it's in super good condition. It's as though nobody read this, but I'm sure it's good anyway. I'm sure it's still good. And uh, the last one, $2 again, another library discard. This is A Polar Affair by Lloyd Spencer Davis. So this is half biography, half nature book. Um, it says here, George Murray Levick was a physician on Robert Falcon Scott's tragic Antarctic expedition of 1910. Maroon in the Antarctic, both on Cape Adare and in a snow cave on Inexpressible Island, Levick passed the time by becoming the first man to study penguins up close. His findings were so shocking to Victorian morals that they were quickly suppressed and then seemingly lost to history. So it's the story of the man who was um, marooned in the Antarctic, but it's also about his research, his observations about penguins. And I think some penguins are gay! <gasps> Shocking! <laughs> so, uh, again, it looks like nobody read the book. It looks like new. Uh, and it comes with a nice little cover. So uh, maybe I'll try to get rid of the sticker there, if I can, if I know how, if it doesn't damage the book too much. And I will have, like, a brand new book just for me. So, the next little batch. This. One dollar each. Outrageous. Um, we have The Death of Achilles by Boris Akunin. So this is a historical mystery to set in Imperial Russia, and I know nothing else about it. I've never read another book by this author or in this series. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be good. After all, uh, Large Mystery Madness is still going on. We still have one week to go, almost. Um, next, uh, another mystery, The Holy Thief by Ellis Peters. I've already read another Ellis Peters earlier in the month. This is a mystery, historical mystery set in 12th century England, and uh, this says uh, the 19th in the Chronicle of Brother Catfow. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to love this one. And then we have a couple of romances. These are names that I saw on uh, Steve Donahue's videos, his uh, library tour. At some point, he, he hit a few romance shelves, and I, I learned a lot of authors' names. Uh, this one, Gone with the Rogue <laughs> by Amelia Gray. Um, I don't remember if Steve has that specific book, but I remember seeing Amelia Gray, and I believe he said this author never disappoints me. So uh, I'm curious about that one. And the other one is a Mary Balog. Uh, I don't know again. I'm, I remember seeing her name in Steve's video, but uh, I don't know if that one exactly uh, was mentioned. So this is someone to remember. And uh, both of these novels are Regency romances. And finally, the last little pile of books. How much did I pay for that? One dollar for all of this. <laughs> One Canadian dollar for five books. And they are all historical romances, all Harlequin historical. Um, yeah, there was this card and it says five for one dollar. It was all mixed in no particular order. And then I spotted one Harlequin historical and then another one. And I figured, ooh, can I find five? And I found five. I think there was another one. Uh, and, and anyway, so I, I barely looked at the titles. I did not even look at the back cover. And I figured historical romance for 20 cents. I can, I can take a pick blindly. And if it doesn't work, I take it to a free library or I bring it back to the Friends of Ottawa library, and yeah, it, it, it will have cost me 20 cents. Uh, so the first one, The Confessions of the Duke of Newlyn by, by, the name is Brownwyn Scott. Okay, I'll get rid of this. Um, here is the cover, and at the back it says, Knowing his best friend, Marianne Trelevin awaits his present in a Mayfair ballroom, Venner, the Duke of Newlyn, 
must hide his secrets. He moonlights as a vigilante in pursuit of his parents murderer. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds very good. Uh, next one, Lillian and the Irresistible Duke. Uh, by the clothing, this looks a bit later than uh, Regency, but I don't know. Oh, Secrets of a Victorian Household. So this is Victorian. Responsible widow Lillian Fairclaw is persuaded to travel to Rome for a hard-earned break to let down her hair. She's surprised to be reunited with passionate, cynical Italian Duke Pietro Venturi. He reawakens her sensual side okay, sex seemed to be expected, and intrigues her with glimpses of pain beneath his rakish surface. Oh, a rake. I love a good rake. <laughs> uh, next, The Passions of Lord Trevithau, again by Browin Scott. Uh, this one, um, part of the series The Cornish Dukes. Cassian Lord Trevithau has a dilemma. To succeed in his aim of building Cornwall's own pleasure garden, he must pursue the loveless tarnish alliance he sought to avoid. But how can he wed reclusive Lady Penrose Prido when he can't forget the enchanting stranger he met at a fair? Oh, where is this going to go? How is it possible to predict that this stranger is the reclusive Lady Penrose Prido? We cannot see that coming at all. <laughs> it's still going to be good anyway. And 20 cents, if it's too bad, if it's not good, if I can, if, 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 well, it's, we always know how romances end, but if the getting there is not enjoyable, it was 20 cents. I can just discard the book easily. Uh, the next one by, oh, the name of the author is written bigger than the title. I suppose that means she's known. Uh, Julia Justice, Justice, The Awakening of Miss Henley. So, um, yeah, th this looks uh, Regency. Part of the Cinderella Spinsters. Miss Emma Henley knows she's neither pretty nor rich enough to lend a good husband. Instead, she th she's thrown her passion into good causes, but this season she's tempted by a flirtation with Lord Theo. The dashing rake, oh, a good rake, uh, is just as determined to stay unwed as she is. It's scandalous, but she's never to marry. Perhaps he can show her the pleasures of the marriage bed. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, another sexy history book. A sexy romance book. It's not a history book, it's a historical romance. And uh, another one, Michelle Stiles, a deal with her rebel Viking. I've never read a Viking romance, so I don't know how this is going to go. Defending her own, her own, I forgot my H. Defending her home, Lady Ensyth captures outlaw Viking Moyer Mimirson. The prisoner will be the ideal ransom for her father, who is being held hostage by the Danes. Yet Moore's flirtatious negotiations exhilarate practical and scythe as much as they surprise her. <laughs> that's going to be fun. So, that's it. That, that's the pile of books that I bought. Um, there I dare try a pyramid. I can't make a pyramid. Um, what can I do? I can... So, there's a polar affair that we can put like this. And then Havana, Subtropical Delirium. So that's a hardcover. I can put it like this. Uh, the essay about university. And then uh, Chiefs and Omnibus. So we have the Code of the Woosters and forgot the other two. The Letters of Vincent van Gogh. Okay. And then, how, how does Steve do that? He must have very strong fingers. Uh, Frida Kahlo, that I'll put like this, and the rest, the rest will end up just in a big pile like this. Yay! <laughs> so that's it for me. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh, let me know if you've read any of these books, if they're good. I'd like to know. <laughs> à la prochaine!